Hey guys, Bartell's Bookshelf here with another Star Trek book review. This time I'm reviewing number 21, Uhura's Song by Janet Kagan. Uh, this one took me a little while to finish because uh, it's uh, quite long compared to the average Star Trek book. That's why I'm doing it as a standalone video. And I really enjoyed this, so I, I wanted to talk about this specifically. Uh, so the story behind this is kind of interesting. Um, this is Janet Kagan's first novel, um, but this wasn't her first written. Um, she wrote a book called uh, Hellspark and took it to Timescape, which was an imprint, the uh, sci-fi imprint of Pocket Books at the time, and um, the editor, um, who I believe at the time was David G. Hartwell, said that, you know, they, they don't publish first-time authors um, through their Timescape line, but they did through their Star Trek line, and so um, knowing absolutely nothing about Star Trek, aside from a few things that her, her younger brother had told her, you know, when they were younger and she saw it on TV, um, she basically went on a crash course watching a bunch of different episodes of the show and learning from people to kind of get an idea of what the show is like, and she realized that Uhura and never really had uh, a prominent role in any of the episodes, so she decided to write, as she put it, a uh, the plum role for Uhura that she never got in the show. Yeah, she did a pretty damn good job, I think. This is probably my favorite uh, Star Trek novel that I've read so far. So this is about um, Uhura, obviously. She has a, a friend, uh, so there are these um, aliens known as the Eiuoans. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll put it up here, <laughs> E.I.U. Owens, and they're basically big bipedal cat people, and um, they're all about uh, songs, they're, they're, they're all about um, music and, and trading songs, and that's how they kind of, it's sort of like their oral tradition, and uh, the planet is being ravaged by this horrible uh, plague called ADF, it's, it's a little bit like mange, um, they get lesions, their fur falls out, McCoy and the rest of the Enterprise crew are scrambling to try to find a cure to this disease, but nothing seems to be working, Uhura remembers a song that uh, her, uh, her E.I.U. Owen friend, Sunfall, uh, taught her that seemed to hint at some kind of a cure to this mysterious disease, and so she shares this with the, shares this with the crew, and through uh, studying the lyrics of these old songs, um, they find out that the E.I.U. Owens are actually uh, exiles from another planet, uh, thousands of years, that they, they were exiled from this planet th thousands of years ago, and so they use the, the songs to try and uh, pinpoint where this planet is and find it in the hopes that they can find a cure to this disease. So, so it was a, a really interesting plot. Um, I really liked the concept of, um, of learning things through song, of discovering things through song. There's a lot of that in this book, of sort of, um, what's that word? Um, archaeoacoustics, that's what it is. Um, it has a very, like, archaeoacoustic vibe where, you know, they're studying old folk songs to try and find information out about a culture and, and trying to find answers to things. Uhura actually plays a prominent role in that because of her relationship with Sunfall and because she's kind of the ship's resident bard. You know, she's got her, her harp, the, the joyeuse as they call it, and she's always like singing songs and stuff, and, and she's got a very beautiful, melodious voice, you know, and so she, she ends up kind of taking point on this whole mission to try and discover where this mysterious planet is, and, and that's all really interesting. And then the other thing that I found really interesting is that the bulk of the book, it's not a spoiler because they find it pretty quickly, um, but they, they find this 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 planet that this the EIU Owens were exiled from, where they meet uh, very similar creatures called Sivowans, who have a, a very similar culture involving uh, songs and oral histories and things like that. The bulk of the novel that I found really really interesting is taken up with uh, the cultural mores of the Sivowans. They basically find out that it's a huge taboo to bring up the EIU Owens. They can't talk about them. It's like a huge cultural thing. So they basically have to figure out. They they have to take their time learning about the Sivowans culture and how to kind of um use that to their advantage to to help uh, find the answers that they seek so that they can cure this disease, um, which especially starts taking on even even deeper uh, implications when they find out that ADF can spread to humans as well. It's sort of a race against time. And I just thought it was all really, really well done. The Sivowans were a really interesting culture, and um, the way that the, 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 the crew of the Enterprise sort of uh, takes their time to like learn about them and study them and, and get to know them, it was really, really refreshing. It was that very, um, you know, IDIC, Infinite Diversity and Infinite Conversation, combinations, you know, that classic Vulcan philosophy that's explored so beautifully in this book, and, and that that sense of uh, cultural understanding, cross-cultural communication that can lead to positive outcomes, and it's just it's just classic classic Star Trek themes that I really, really loved, and I thought were done really well, and, and the Sivowans had a really interesting culture as well. It's actually very, um, I thought, very highly developed in the book. There's a lot of stuff about uh, their usage of song. There's a lot of stuff about um, their sort of little cultural mores, like uh, they have an expression which they 
call pulling your tail, which is similar to like pulling your leg. And um, a lot of the people in the, the a lot of the Sivawans um, communicate uh, through their tails emotionally. Um, so you know, if their tails are curled, you know, that's like sort of their their version of laughter. Um, you know, if, if if it's tight, you know, that's like tension and, and and potentially anger. They place a lot of importance on names, which is really interesting. Your name says a lot about you, not only like who you are, but like where you're from. And a name is something to be respected, so it's it's considered very um, taboo to to not refer to someone as their preferred name and can actually lead to a fight um, if you're not careful. And not only is there stuff about the cultural differences between the Savowans and the crew of the Enterprise, there's stuff about um, differences between humans and Vulcans, as there often is in Star Trek. One of the main relationships in the novel that I found really, really interesting, the, the, the ship's doctor, Evan Wilson, who's kind of taking the place of McCoy because McCoy is on Iaiuo um, trying to figure out the cure to this disease. And she has this really fun, uh, sort of almost antagonistic relationship with Spock, where Spock is very curious about her because she's not like, she's very unpredictable, more so than other humans are, and she's fascinated by him, and she enjoys, as the as the Savowans would say, pulling his tail. And so they have this kind of fun, back and forth, kind of uh, messing with each other in a very in a mutually respectful way. And they have a lot of interesting conversations about Vulcans and humans. Like, for example, um, there's this one scene where um, she talks about how, like, it's, it's very uh, unnerving because uh, when Vulcans talk to you, they give you their full attention, and and it's very uh, it, it's not something that humans are used to being given someone's you know full undivided attention, and it's such an intense gaze that she talks about how like it can be misconstrued as like sexual interest. And at first, Spock is all apologetic, and he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'll try. I'll, I, I won't do that again in the future." And she's like, "Oh no, like go ahead." She was like, "You know, even if that's not the intent behind it, it makes me feel good to to know, to, to to feel that way about it." And, and that was really fun. Uh, and actually. Actually, more so than any of the Enterprise crew, I think uh, Evan Wilson sort of came away with the book. She was definitely my favorite character. She's a bit of a Han Solo type. She's very roguish, um, very, very, very snarky, quick-witted, a bit of uh, the, the grumpiness of someone like Bones. But she's also like very talented with the quarter staff, and she gets to you know kick some ass and stuff. And um, she, she's almost like piratey a little bit. She's got a bit of a pirate vibe. And towards the end of the novel, there's uh, some stuff revealed about her that I thought was really, really intriguing. And and I really wish that we got to read more about her. Unfortunately, um, Janet Kagan, apparently at the time, wanted to write a sequel to this book with um, some of the characters from this book, which I assume would be Evan Wilson, where we would follow up on her, the mystery of her and kind of get to know more about her. But unfortunately, um, Pocket Book said, you know, at that time, you know, they didn't publish sequels with original characters, unfortunately. So we never got to see that. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of really exciting um, survival scenes. So basically, without getting into too many spoilers, um, a big part of the story involves them sort of exploring, uh, making a trek from one city to another city, and um, they're not they're not allowed to like use their phasers or anything like that. And that whole sequence is really really exciting. There's like a, a scene on a rushing river where they have to cross this rickety bridge. There's a scene where they fight these giant sort of like saber tooth cat things called slashbacks, and uh, Spock gets to be a total badass in that he like gets a spear and he like lances one like through the uh, I think through the neck and it talks about like the blood spraying everywhere and like Spock's just like you know he's, it's really fucking cool my only real criticism of the book is that being that it's called Uhura's Song and it was sort of written as a way to give Uhura a, a, a sort of more of a starring role than she had previously in the series up to this point. After kind of the first third of the book, once they get on to Sivau, it ends up becoming more about Evan Wilson and Kirk and Spock, and Uhura is kind of like pushed to the wayside, which is a little disappointing because, I mean, that's the whole point of this book, right? That it was written for her. But, I mean, the rest of the book is just so fun and exciting and entertaining, especially like the back and forth between Kirk, Spock, and, and Wilson is just so good, and them learning all the different sort of cultural mores and stuff of the uh, the Sivowans and just having to work their way through her, work their way through through the plot through diplomacy rather than action. I mean that's classic Star Trek, and I think she does it really well and she captures that whole dynamic really really well. And that really surprised me for somebody who, until she wrote this book, apparently was just not not even a fan of Star Trek was just only knew about it because her her younger brother was into it. But she did a really good job. She captured. I mean this feels like an episode, um, really re like a really really good episode of the original series. I loved it. It was it was really fun. Fun. Probably my uh, my favorite uh, Trek book thus far. So yeah, I'm I'm really really glad I read this. I'm and I'm really sad that we, we we don't get to learn more about Evan Wilson because she came away with the book. She was she was a great character. and I would have loved to have learned more about her. It feels like an extended episode. Of
episode of the original series, but it's able to do more than the original series because you know it can take you know a longer time to develop its story. Um, you can have weirder aliens like these big bipedal cat things. It's just great. It's just everything I love about Star Trek um, in one book, and I, I'm really glad I read it. And I look, I definitely look forward to reading more of this uh, series soon uh, down the line. I'm really glad I decided to get back into this franchise again. So yeah, um, that was my review of Uhura's Song by Janet Kagan. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.